an open heart, Lord. Let it change us. To whom shall we go, God? You have the words of eternal life. Nangal yaar edithukku povum andavare neer. Nithiya jeevan ullia varthegali neer vaitharukkirir. Let your teaching fall like rain. Your words descend like dew. Like showers on new grass and abundant rain on tender plants. Let it revive, refresh, restore each and every one of us, O oh, oh God. we pray that you will speak give us ears to listen and hearts that will be obedient to your word ketkira kaadugalum andavare keel padidalulla aaviyum irudeyathiyum engal ovarkum kodukumbadiyaga yesu naamathinale chebikrom amen july 15th 2000 is a very significant day in our lives in my family's life july 19th am thedi 2000 aandu or mukhyamana naal adu enna naal endral anda naalil dhan anda nalla naalil dhan naan america desathukku mudalavadaga kudumbamaga vande sendhen 23 varshangal neetru niraivanathu yesterday was the completion of 23 years after landing in this country i came here with two children now i'm doubled i have four children unfortunately or fortunately my wife has not doubled i still have one wife and uh, as i reflected yesterday we actually as a family because of uh, the transitions that are going to take place uh, we are, first i have to say i'm so grateful to god that for the past two and a half years my house was full meaning all the children everyone were in the house so every day it was a big party periya edla da seyno ena 6 7 apdi da nadandirundichu so um, we are going, heading towards some transitions because our second son is moving to virginia and after that we do not know where god is going to guide him after the higher studies so we wanted to uh, get out somewhere yesterday evening we had some time yesterday afternoon so we went to north jersey intending to go to a particular place but as we drove in because of the traffic jam we were very impatient we could not go and then immediately just unintentionally everybody said no let's go to where we first came so we went to the places where we landed first the hotel that i stayed the first apartment everything we looked around north jersey elmwood park area we were there in that very blessed place for 3 years and after that we have been shut in edison forever we moved from there in 2003 and now forever it seems like god is not going to move us out of edison i don't know but as we were there it didn't occur to us but as we were talking suddenly it dawned on me yeah july 15 2000 and then my children said today is july 15th and which year are we 2020 23 years ago i had the privilege yesterday to go just park my car just in front of the hotel where i first came and landed and uh, had the blessing of my mother in law who was with us and said a thanksgiving prayer the faithfulness of god god is faithful that is the theme of my message 
And this is going to be a two-part message. So if you want to get the whole idea or the big idea, you need to come next Sunday as well. If you don't come next Sunday, then you will lose half of it. The title of my message is, God is Faithful. I hope this is going to encourage each and every one of us today. As I told you, as I reflected on 23 years, almost when I was uh, there standing and singing and thinking about there's so much, the story, the story of God's faithfulness. There's so much I could say. I could just keep you all here forever through the night just telling one story after another. Because the God who we serve is a faithful God. He's extremely faithful. He's never failed us. He will never fail any one of us. Nam yariyam devan kai vidaveyam atar. Andar odiya unmai perida irukkirudhu enru vasnam sollya patta irukkirudhu. Pulambal moonra dadigaram iruvathi moonra dasanatha parkam boludhu. Nam nirmula maga adirupadhu kathra odiya sutta kirubai. Avar odiya irakkangalukku mudive illai. அவருடைய அன்பு பெரிதாக அவர் உண்மை பெரி அவருடைய இரக்கங்களுக்கு முடிவே இல்லை அவருடைய அவருடைய இரக்கம் அவர் பெரித அவர் உண்மை பெரிதாக இருக்கிறது பிகாஸ் ஆஃப் காட்ஸ் கிரேட் லவ் வி ஆர் நாட் கன்சூம்ட் அண்ட் இஸ் கம்பேஷன்ஸ் டூ நாட் ஃபெயில் தே ஆர் நியூ எவ்ரி மார்னிங் கிரேட் இஸ் தை ஃபெய்த்ஃபுல்னஸ் morning by morning new mercies we see all we have needed thy hand hath provided great is thy faithfulness that should be the testimony or the story of every christ follower this is one unchangeable character of god the faithfulness of god i'm sure whether you state it or not Every one of us have experienced the goodness of the faithfulness of God. Kattar kirubayaga, unmayaga irkkaradhe padi nalai dhaan. Now manai vurum inge avandirukkurum. Whether you have experienced it, whether you have not, whether you have shared it with anybody, doesn't matter. But God's faithfulness remains. The meaning of that particular word is God is constant. He is steadfast. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. the truthfulness of god the trustworthiness of god the honest nature of god the reliability of god or the fidelity of god anega vaarthigal irukiradhu nam sollalam and all of that encompass together and we can say in one word the faithful god god is faithful and what i'm going to do the next two sundays and today we are going to look at one particular aspect and next sunday we are going to look at another aspect and you all been part of our um, i mean most of you all were there for our retreat and you all did very well in the quiz you know some of you all wrote very interesting answers we all enjoyed it and uh, in fact some unexpected answers were written but that was also good if you all would have noticed judges the portions that we gave you were judges chapter 9 through 12 and then 1 through 4 right 1 through 4 and 9 through 12 i do not know how many of you really thought why i skipped those uh, those passage that one few chapters in between 5 6 7 8 9 there you have the very famous story everybody knows about this man gideon gideon sorry anegarku theriyum gideon jom pannaru nam and man nammalum jom pannalam and then after i stopped at chapter 12 because chapter 13 starts a very interesting story i would call him the six pack man in the bible nam ellarkum theriyum six pack man ibdin sonnale idu ibdi kaatna nal enga onnu illati kudu ibdi kaatuva yaar you all know that person samson so we are going to go through the story of samson today and next week and see how we can understand the faithfulness of god many times when we talk about the faithfulness of god or the man of faith or whoever is uh, um, had that great relationship with god we think of abraham 
God was faithful to Abraham because he gave him a promise at the age of 75 and he fulfilled the promise at the age of 100. Faithful God. David, when he was 30, he was given uh, the kingship at the age of 30. God was faithful. Joseph's story, yes, he was 17 years old. He was sold by his brothers. He went into the pit, but then he went to the prison. He became to a palace. All of them, fantastic success stories. God is faithful. Everybody will say, yes, God is faithful. But I want us to look at this nature of God in a different lens through the life of Samson. Samson's story is not a success story. Samson's story is a failure. If there's one person that we would think failed God during the process with the position that he was given, and the things that he was expected to do, Samson was one. But as you stick through this story, you will understand how God's faithfulness does not depend on the character or the faithfulness of humanity or man or woman. So we are going to look at four aspects today of God's faithfulness. Four aspects. So let's look at, I asked only Judges chapter 16, the last part to be read. But we are going to look at from Judges chapter 13. That's where the story starts. The story of Samson. Judges chapter 13. And Judges, the whole book of Judges, talks about the rebellion or the evil that the Israelites do. In the Israel Makalodia, Aulodia Pavangai Kuriti Pesapate, Aulonda, Andor on the Adimai Tanatke Vituduar. He will give them over to the Philistines who were, who, who were the enemy of God or the enemies of the Israelites. And then they will torture them, they will subdue them, and God will raise up a judge, and the judge will then deliver them. And they'll all be very happy. Oh, God delivered us. And again they will fall into rebellion. And then again they will confess. Again God will raise up a deliverer. And then they will all obey. They'll say, we want to obey God. Then they again will go back. It's called the sin cycle or the rebellion cycle. And after all of these judges, now God raises up a judge. And Samson comes in that line. Again the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines for how long? Forty years. A certain man of Zorah named Manoah from the clan of the Danites. Danites and the Israel Kotra Tarle or Kotram. Had a wife, this man Manoah clan of the Danites had a wife who was childless, unable to give birth. The angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, You are barren and childless, but you are going to become pregnant and give birth to a son. So, there's an, it is called the Christophany. Christophany in Jerusalem, when an angel of the Lord appears, based on how it is presented, Christ actually appeared even before he was born, because Christ always existed. He was always existing. So here, Christophany, it's, uh, you will understand why it is Christophany, because suddenly he disappears. So Manoah had a wife. She was barren. The scripture does not tell us, unlike Hannah, who prayed for a child. But in that society, in that community, they will look down on a woman if she does not bring forth a child. She is not treated well amongst uh, other women. So but here, probably she did, probably she prayed, but it is not recorded for us. But then the angel appears, and then the angel says, you're going to have a son. And then this son has a mission. Even from birth, the mother also has to join in this mission. Now see to it 
that you drink no wine or other fermented drink, that you do not eat anything unclean. You will become pregnant and have a son whose head is never to be touched by a razor because the boy is to be a Nazarite. Dedicated to God from the womb, he will take the lead, or in another translation it says, he will begin in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. The scholars say there is a clue right here. It doesn't say that he will deliver. He will begin delivering the people from the Philistines, from the hands of the Philistines. So, Nazarite vow, there are only two people in the Bible who have taken it. Samson and then in that line you find uh, uh, Samuel and then Samson. And there are three stipulations for the Nazarite vow. Nazarite, do not confuse this with Jesus who was called the Nazarene. Jesus did not take a Nazarite vow. Nazarite vow are taken individually by people. Or right here, we see the angel of the Lord is telling the mother of Samson that you should do this and your son also should do it. No wine, no eating grapes or no raisins, nothing of that sort. You cannot eat. Number two, no razor. No razor to be applied on the head. You cannot shave your head. And thirdly, you cannot get near a dead body. So you know the distinction right now. So Samson is following, is supposed to follow all of that. Then the woman went to her husband and told him, A man of God came to me. He looked like an angel of God. Very awesome. I didn't ask him where he came from and he didn't tell me his name. But he said to me, you will become pregnant and have a son. Now then drink no wine. He, she repeats the same thing. Because the boy will be a Nazarite of God from the womb until the day of his death. So first, number one, we need to understand God is faithful. Part one today, I'm going to look at the nature of God. What are the different attributes in his faithfulness? First, God works with a divine purpose. He's got a purpose that blows everyone's mind. He is working with a purpose. This woman, she was barren, childless. She did not even know. I do not know. She probably wanted a child. But in God's plan and purpose, he chose this woman, Manoah's wife, and came to this woman and said, you're barren, you're childless. You're going to have a son. And he will begin delivering the Israelites from the Philistines. And these are the things you're supposed to do. God's purpose. God is faithful to his purpose. Andavar Tanudia no Kataka Wunma Yulavaraga Irkra. Namudya no Katakilla Avarudya no Kataka. We all need to understand that God has got a purpose. All of us, we all have desires, we have plans, we have purposes, but does it align with God's purpose? Do you know what God's purpose is in your life right now? However old you are. If God has kept you and me alive, there is a purpose of God. He could have taken you out any time. He can take out anybody, any time, any moment. He's got the power. The power of life and death is in his hands. The purpose of God. Do you know God's purpose in your life? Let me just show a few verses. In Psalm chapter 33, verses 10 and 11, this is what it says. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. So the, the nations have a plan. So the Lord foils their plan and he thwarts the purposes of the peoples. So people have different purposes. He even disturbs those purposes because he's got a divine purpose. And then it says in verse 11, But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purposes of his heart through all generations. He's got a purpose. It's a firm purpose. It's forever. And it is a purpose that is, runs through generations. Do you know what's good, God, what is God's purpose for your life in this generation that you're part of? What is the work that God has given you to do? What is his purpose for you? How do you know his purpose? You can say it in another word, another phrase. 
வாட் இஸ் காட்ஸ் வில் ஃபார் மீ என்று கேட்கலாம் கத்தருடைய சித்தம் எனக்கு என்ன என்று கேட்கலாம் ஹவு டு யூ நோ காட்ஸ் வில் ஃபார் யூ இட் ஆல் ஸ்டார்ட்ஸ் ஈவன் ஃப்ரம் யுவர் பர்த் வித் யோர் நேம் வாட் நேம் காட் கிவ்ஸ் யூ த்ரூ யோர் பேரண்ட்ஸ் what are the gifts and the talents and the abilities god has given you and as you grow you begin to identify those things and then if you become a follower of christ those purposes become channeled to achieve god's purpose for you but many people miss out on god's purpose when you miss out on god's purpose don't think god loses something we are the ones who lose something because we lose the blessing that god has for us when we walk in his purpose wadi bokham a reformed theologian theologian who is pretty well known here in this country uh, and i heard this particular testimony that he has been sharing i think 2 years back he was almost dead he had a congestive heart failure and he was being transported from i think um one african nation to america he was being transported here and as he was being transported uh, the people were all asked to pray and it seems as they were praying and he was brought into the hospital and he is almost dying they do not know whether he will survive he will live his wife was talking to somebody on the phone and his wife uh, wife's friend was telling Uh, his wife don't worry we are praying god needs body god needs his work because this man is impacting tremendously with crystal clear theo- theo- uh, the- theology he is speaking very clearly he uh, with regard to all the issues that are confronting the church in fact recently he is talking about the evils that are confronting our church and god has been using him so mightily all over and so this uh, wife's friend was telling oh you know what god needs and he was just overhearing it seems don't worry we are praying for him god needs him god is going to heal him restore him and use him and it seems the wife told the friend i i accept everything that you say i'm so happy to hear all of that but i want to tell you this god does not need him and i'm not praying because god needs him i'm asking god to spare him and this man was like oh he said god does not need him i've been working all over i'm doing god's work god does not need him i'm just asking god to spare him and then it seems after the phone call he looked at his wife and said yeah you know yeah yeah it seems right theologically it's right that god does not need me because he can use anybody to do god's work he can even use a donkey to speak so he can use anyone to speak but then he asked his wife do you need me do you want me to be still here in this world or you also want me to pass away so he had this interaction but just think of the theological underpinnings or the theological uh, base of how they understand god's purpose god has got a purpose if god's purpose was Uh, to finish or his work is done god would definitely accomplish that we all know the story of job here samson is born but in the story of job you know what job went through and at the end of um, the story in chapter 42 this is what job says you know all the bad, the questioning and the answers that they go back and forth the friends are speaking then god is speaking to job job is speaking to god and then after like the climactic passage is this this is what job says job replied to the lord i know that you can do all things no plan of yours can be thwarted you asked who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge so god is asking who are you to obscure my plan without knowledge and then job is replying surely i spoke of things i did not understand things too wonderful for me to know you said listen now and i will speak i will question you and you shall answer me now job is my ears had heard of you this is what job is saying my ears we have heard much about you god but now my eyes have seen you therefore i despise despise myself and repent in dust and ashes 
Remember who Job, who Job was. He was the most righteous person and this was God's testimony about Job. God told about Job to, the, to, the, to Satan. He bragged about, do you know you went all over? Did you see Job? How righteous, blameless he is? And that is the man who went through so much of affliction. He was confused. He could not understand. And at the end of the story, he's saying, I know, Lord, that you can do all things. No plan of yours can be thwarted. I tried to question you, but I did not have knowledge. I, I should not have spoken. But now, so far, my ears had heard of you, but because of this experience, my eyes have seen you. It looks like his spiritual eyes were opened after the experience that Job went through. And what is Job saying now? He is repenting in dust and ashes. Another example in Acts chapter 5, there is a story of how the apostles were all being persecuted for the good news that they were preaching. And the end of the story, they are being brought out and then they are put in the prison. And then they are being, the, the angel comes and then releases them. The men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts teaching the people. And then the people, they, they did not know what to do. But then, this is what happens. When the people, the Pharisees and the leaders, when they heard it, they, they were furious and wanted to put them to death. But this man, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law under whom even Paul studied, this is what he is saying. He is saying, he was honored by all the people. He stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. Apostle Ainda Adhikarathle, Apostle Argal, Tunba Patta Padigargal, Adhika Paraga Onga, Ella Veliya Vanda Odana, Gamaliel Indra. And the Parisegar Yelindin Indri, because he was very honorable, he stands up and he says, Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. Some time ago, Theodos appeared claiming to be somebody. 400 men rallied to kill him, rallied to him. He was killed and all his followers were dispersed and it all came to nothing. After Theodos, Judas the Galilean appeared in the days of the census and led a band of people in revolt. He too was killed and all his followers were scattered. Two people came up, Theodos and then um, the Judas the Galilean. They both were killed. Therefore, this is what Gamaliel is saying, honored by the people. In the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone, let them go for if their purpose or activity is of human origin. See how beautifully he says this. If these people are acting in their own instinct or according to their own plans and purposes, according to what they want, if it's of human origin, what will happen to the plans of hu the people, humanity? It will fail. Then it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. Wow. As a church, if we are walking in God's purposes, if we are fulfilling what God wants us to do, you know what? Nobody can stand against us. No human plan can thwart us. But if we are walking according to our own plans, according to our desires, according to our strategies, it will fail. But if it is according to God, nobody can stand against us. That's what Gamaliel is saying. You will not be able to stop these people. You will only be fighting against God. See, God's purposes are so firm. And that is why in Samson's story you find God, the family, Manoah and his wife, they did not know what was going to happen. But the angel comes and he delivers the news. And he said he is going to be beginning the deliverance of the Israelites from the Philistines. Second, Prayer. God is faithful not only to enact his divine purpose, but God is faithful to hear our prayers. To hear our prayers. I'm going to tell you some prayers. Here, this is what happens. The wife comes and tells her husband. Unfortunately, here in this story, 
also we find the God appearing to a woman. Earlier it was to a man, Abraham was the one God appeared to. He goes and tells Sarah, Sarah laughs. And now here we see uh, the woman is the one who first gets to see the man of God. Then Manoah prayed to the Lord after being told in verse 8. Manoah prayed to the Lord. Wife is another believe pandla. Wife sollu the believe pandla ma. Nariya peru kandar kinga pastor. Nini ke sollu pastor. Believe pandla ma ille and manoa thende we learn whether you want to believe, how you can tackle those situations. Okay. Manoa prayed to the Lord. Pardon your servant, Lord. So first, Lord, please forgive me. First, you must ask forgiveness from God for doing this. Okay. Pardon your servant, Lord. And then say, I beg you to let the man of God you sent to my wife, sent to us, to come again. <laughs> Second time. See, angel of the Lord appearing to a woman is such a great thing. Oh, very good, very good. We will do whatever. No, 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 no. This man, Lord, forgive me. Whoever you sent to my wife, I have to do a background check. So please send him again. I want to verify this. I want to make sure. So second time, God is listening to this prayer. Bring, and to teach us how to bring up the boy who is born. And the next verse says, God heard Manoah and the angel of God came again to the woman while she was out in the field. But her husband Manoah was not with her. The way God is answering the prayer again, it is not. God saying, send him again so that I can see. God saying, okay, I'm going to do it, but this time I'm going to use a different strategy. Again, it is coming to the woman only. The woman hurried to tell her husband because she probably, Manoah went and told, listen, I know you told me, but I've asked God, let me see whether God answers my prayer. And then the woman is hearing, hurry to tell her husband and then tell her, he's here, the man who appeared to me the other day. Then Manoah got up and followed his wife. When he came to the man, he said, are you the man who talked to my wife? I am, he said. And then the story goes on. Because of time, I won't go into the details. We are looking at only the nature of God. See, God even listens to this kind of a prayer. It's not only prayers of, like, what we ask, oh, we have to ask for big things. You know, this man is having a little doubt. He's saying, can you please come back again, Lord? Okay, God's saying, okay, Manoah. I'll do it again for you. You know, God answers very interesting prayers. The way God answers prayer, we all want all positive answers to prayer, right? But there are different kinds of prayer that the Lord answers. There's another story in the book of 2 Kings chapter 2, where the prophet, a man of God, um, I, I'll, I'll say that, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that and then we will touch this, yeah. Proverbs 15, 29 and Luke 18, 9 through 14. What that says is, Proverbs 15, 29 says, The Lord hears the prayer of the righteous. So we say only righteous people God hears. How about unrighteous people? If you look at Luke 18, God listened to the prayer of the sinner. Who said, Lord, I'm a sinner. Have mercy upon me. He stood outside. He was a tax collector. God heard his prayer. So God not only hears the prayer of the righteous, he also hears the repentant heart of a sinner. He heard his prayer. So now I'm going to talk, uh, give you a quick illustration of how God heard the prayer of a righteous man in a very interesting way. And this is a story where you see the prophet Elisha, who was the successor of Elijah. And this man was walking one day, he was very happy, and then uh, I'm not here to... Um, Indict anybody here, but unfortunately, he was a man who did not have much hair on his head. He was bald. And there are some young people, so this is, a, this is a tactic that I can give for the people who feel insulted, you know, when somebody calls you, children call you, oh, you baldy, you baldy, you're bald today, walukitala, walukitala. That's what they did. Get out of here, baldy. Get out of here, baldy. Walukitala, piliyopo. You know what Elisha did? He turned around, looked at the boys, that little boys who had come there, and he called down a curse in the name of the Lord. So it was kind of a prayer. He cursed. If it stopped there, if that sort has been recorded, then that means, why is he cursing? But he called down a curse in the name of the Lord. He said, Andavare, 
என்ன ஆண்டவரை இப்படின்னு சொல்லி ஒரு கேட்டிருப்பாரு நேம் ஆஃப் த லார்ட் அது சொல்லி முடித்த உடனே ரெண்டு பேர்ஸ் வந்துச்சு அப்படியே டூ பேர்ஸ் கேம் அவுட் ஆஃப் த வுட்ஸ் இன் நியூ ஜெர்சி அண்ட் மால்டு ஃபார்ட்டி டூ ஆஃப் த பாய்ஸ் ஃபார்ட்டி டூ பாய்ஸ் மால் தேம் கில் தேம் இட்ஸ் அன் இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் பிரேர் தட் இலைஷா பிரேர் ஹி வாஸ் பீங் ஹர்ட் இன்சல்டட் and he just called on the name of the lord why are these guys doing this to me and then this is what happened and in um, judges chapter 15 verses 18 through 19 la samson grows up i'm not as i told you i'm not going into all the details of the story but in 15 verses 18 through 19 what happens is this the spirit of the lord came upon him and then he takes a fresh bone of a jaw bone of a donkey he strikes down thousand men and then he said with the donkey's jaw bone abila chali mudicha odana he threw away the jaw bone and the place was called ramat lehi 18th verse is like ibdiya solla pattirukirathu because he was very thirsty he cried out to the lord you have given your servant this great victory must i now die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised then god opened up the hollow place in lehi and water came out of it when samson drank the water his strength returned and he revived tanni ki jom banar andavar and tanni kudutar god gave water to his servant he takes care god provides the basic needs he provides for our basic needs we think that we need big thing but you know what the water and the food and the clothes that's why in matthew chapter 6 it is said why are you worrying about what food you have to eat why are you worried about what clothes you have to wear why are you so worried about it seek ye first the kingdom of god and all these things will be added to you but what happens we are only worried about the food and the water god he prayed for water and god gave him water see god takes care of the little things sometimes we pray yes god we want god to heal cancers we want our god to heal um, uh, all the dreaded diseases yes god can answer he can change things around but you know what god even heals a simple fever peter's mother in law had fever god healed that fever so we need to look at god as a provider of our basic needs and even more which falls into line in accordance with the purpose that he has for us god provides for us god provides our needs and in fact there's so much i can say i've said many many stories about how god provided for us for the past 23 years it's hard to recount there's so many i was just thinking which one should i pull out of my hat to share with the people which one should i say i've said, i've shared about how god has taken care of our medical needs uh, uh, shared about how god took care of our immigration needs there's so many that i can say but maybe this one thing i would uh, just share because god is a god who works through the purpose uh, his purposes throughout generations I do not know whether I have shared it here or it's in a different church. As you know, I was studying in Alliance Theological Seminary and there I was and uh, during the weekends, I had the um, privilege of taking my kids too because they're off from school. They will come and they'll sit down outside and then uh, during the break, they'll come with me to the mailbox and uh, then we'll, t- we'll spend some time together, then I'll get back to my class. So uh, one such weekend, I went there and... Um, i go to the mailbox in fact they had another event that previous week and uh, my children had participated in that event and after that we went to the mailbox and i was taking out my papers and suddenly there was an envelope there in that and then i took it out and my children my two boys i, I do not know my youngest one was there uh, reshma was not existing at that time but uh, reema was there i believe so as we were there we were looking at it and uh, in the envelope they took it and immediately they read and the uh, front of the envelope this is what was written god asked me to give this to you and then i opened the envelope and right in front of my kids i counted 400 dollar bills i still do not know who gave that to me that is all it was just there in the mailbox See, God's provision, as I said, there's so much that when we reflect his goodness, how God provides for us, and through 
prayer. Prayer is that one um, communication channel that God has provided for us for all things that we need. Quickly, third, God is faithful to preserve our lives, to preserve our lives. And this is what um, we read in Judges chapter 14 through 16. How many times Samson could have lost his life? How many times Samson could have lost his life? But it did not happen. And in Psalm 31 verse 23, this is what we read. Psalm 31 verse 23. Love the Lord, all his faithful people. The Lord preserves those who are true to him, but the proud he pays back in full. The Lord preserves those who are true to him. He preserves our life till the time is done. Till our purpose is done on this earth. He preserves our life. Samson, he could have had so many opportunities. He, people tried to kill him. You know how many times people came to kill him. But then God did not allow his life to be taken out. And uh, Psalm verse 41 verse 2 talks about that again. Psalm verse 41 verse 2 says this. The Lord pr protects and preserves them. They are counted among the blessed in the land. He does not give them over to the desire of their foes. God will not allow our enemy to take our lives until his purpose is done. He preserves us. He protects us. And then in Psalm 119, this is what David writes. Uh, the psalm writer says, My comfort in my suffering. Are you suffering today? Are you going through something internal that nobody can understand? That you cannot even share with anybody. You know, this is a verse that can comfort you. My comfort in my suffering is this. Your promise preserves my life. Your promise preserves my life. How does God preserve our lives? He preserves us. He continues to preserve each and every one of us until his time. Until the time that God has for us. So we need to continue to trust in God. And God continues to protect and preserve our lives in this particular fashion. Hosea writes about this and Paul writes about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians how does God protect your life and my life? How, does, how has he protected? Has he protected your life? Are we talking about just the physical protection that God has given each and every one of us? Yes, God has protected our life through many dangers, toils and snares, through sicknesses. But there's an ultimate protection that God has given to our lives. He has preserved our lives. And what is that? This is what Paul writes in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. When the perishable has been clothed with imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Yenre. Where, O death, is your sting? Where, O death, is your sting? Where, O death, is your victory? But thanks be to God, He gives us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So how has God preserved your life? How has He been faithful in preserving your life and my life? How? By reigning victoriously over death. Now, when we die, we actually just sleep and enter into the presence of God. We, as followers of Christ, live forever. And it is that hope that gave the wife that Nesa was sharing about. Even when she lost her husband at a very young age, she's able to stand and say, His grace is sufficient for me. Why? 
she knows that her husband is living forever and she is going to have that eternal life. Our lives are all preserved from eternal death and that happens when we enter into a relationship with God. God is faithful to give us his power and his presence. How does God do that? In Judges chapter 13, verse 13 to 16, and, uh, and in chapter 16, verses 23 to 31, where Samuel read that passage, the last part of the story of uh, Samson, what happened to Samson, how God, in his faithfulness, gives his power and his presence. How do we experience God's power? He's faithful to give us his power and his presence. He has given it to us. How have you and me experienced that power and his presence? Are you experiencing his power and his presence in your life? Because he's faithful. And before looking at the text, I want to just uh, look at John chapter 14 and Acts 1. I'm just going to tell you because of time. In John chapter 14, when God is promising the Holy Spirit, he's saying, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come back to you. I will be with you. I will live inside of you. I will make my abode with you. That is what Jesus promised. And how did he do it? In Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Again, he promised, stay here in Jerusalem. Do not leave. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power. You will receive power to be my disciples or to be, to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. You will receive power to be my witnesses. I am promising you my power and my presence through the Holy Spirit. And John 14, we see that. Acts 1, we see it. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, we know this verse. No temptation has taken to you other than that which is common to man. But God is faithful. He will make a way of escape. He will help you to bear up under whatever stress that you are undergoing. Whatever difficulty, suffering or trial. It's actually a trial. It talks about enduring a trial. God will give us the strength. God is faithful. Not only to fulfill his purpose, not only through prayer, to hear our prayers and to provide for us, not only to preserve our lives on this earth, he has already preserved it for eternity as I showed it to you. And lastly, he has promised to give us his power and his presence to endure anything that he allows in our life. And if you look at the story of Samson in, from Judges 13, we keep Reading this phrase, and the spirit of the Lord began to stir him. And the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. The spirit of the Lord came upon him again and again. And finally, in chapter 16, when he did not know that the Lord has left him, we all know the story. He was brought before that temple, before Dagon, that idol god of the Philistines. And... They were mocking at him. He knew that he has lost his power. But then you see what happens in Samson's life. Samson, he was brought out by a young boy. They have gouged out his eyes. And even then in his weakness, not knowing whether anything can happen, but this time he knew that there was a purpose in his life. And what was that purpose? That he will deliver the Israelites from the Philistines. He will begin the deliverance. So somehow maybe he's in his mind he's thinking, God's going to help me. And he says this prayer, Sovereign Lord, remember me this one time. In the Varumurai Andavarai One more time, just once more. Let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. Samson reached to the center pillars, uh, central pillars on which the temple stood. And then we know what happened. He just pushed it aside and the temple came down. And the scripture tells us that he also said that let, let me also die. And he said, the scripture says, thus he killed many more when he died. 
than while he lived. This actually reminds me of something, and I'm going to leave you with this very tantalizing thought as you come back next week, that God is faithful in fulfilling his purpose. God is faithful to hear our prayers and provide for us even our basic needs. God is faithful to preserve our lives physically. He has preserved it eternally for eternity. And lastly, he has promised us his power and his presence. And in Samson's story, we see that he, say, he killed more people than when he was alive. Meaning he achieved more through his death than he, when he was alive. There is one other person that comes to my mind who because of his death, he was going to achieve a far greater purpose for humanity. And he is none other than Jesus Christ himself. Amen.